you know, I um, today, this is Veterans Day weekend, and I know I grew up in a family that um, my mom was very, very outspoken against war and didn't like military whatsoever. And I didn't grow up with an appreciation for it, but I know that um, as I as I've grown in in um, life as well as in faith, um, it's taken on a whole other meaning for me, especially as a Christian. Um, this whole thing of uh, us coming here, we come and we celebrate somebody who laid down his life um, so that we might live and um, sacrifice the glories of heaven so that we can have life. Um, and um, it's amazing to me. Thank you guys for the ways that you have sacrificed and, and put yourself um, in a place of servanthood so that we can live better lives. It's, it's a powerful thing that you've done. Um, and it's, and it's important to, not just on this weekend, but um, regularly to say thank you. Um, those are powerful words, not just to hear for somebody who has done something for us, but it's, it's a really powerful thing for us to say. And this month we're focused on um, Thanksgiving. What role does it play in our lives and, and how, does it, how do we become more thankful people? And um, so today we're gonna look at um, what it means to say thank you. I know for me there was there was a couple magic words growing up. There was please, which got me things. And then once I got things, um, what do you say? What are the magic words? Thank you. Um, they're, they're important words. So we're going to look at a passage that um, gets at the importance of it. And it's found in Luke chapter 17. And um, we're going to look at verses 11 through 19. Let me read this text for us. <laughs> now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee, and as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. And they stood at a distance, and they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back. And he was praising God in a loud voice. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet. And he thanked him. He was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except for this foreigner? And then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Let's pray. God, um, thank you for the ways that you are cleansing us, for the way that you work in our lives. Um, show us the place of returning to you to say thanks. Um, help us to see what's going on in our lives and, and in our world, and speak to us now through your word. We love you. Amen. Um, so here are ten guys, and they have... Uh, a deadly illness, um, which, um, especially in their culture, it's a catchy one. It's it's um, it's contagious, and so what that meant was uh, they woke up one morning. Maybe they had uh, some discoloration, maybe a, a, a spot where there wasn't any um, color on their skin, and, and they go in and they showed it to the priest, and the priest diagnoses it and says, "Oh, oh you have leprosy." So what that means is now you need to make sure to not be in the city at all. You, you need to live on the outskirts of the city. You no longer have your family, your life, your work. Um, you're going to sit outside the city. And, and if anybody comes close to you who's not a leper, um, just make sure to yell unclean as loud as you can. Um, so this person would go live out there, hang out with the other lepers. And um, one of the problems with leprosy is that it would uh, eventually work on your vocal cords. And so um, here are these 10 guys. They're outside the city. They hear that Jesus is coming, and, and they have to yell in unison because their voices have gotten weaker. Um, Lord, have pity on us. Master, have pity on us. Um, so they yell. And Jesus says, head back into the city. And as you go, um, you'll be healed. And for that, I have to admire these guys. Uh, that's a courageous step to begin to walk towards wholeness when it hasn't happened yet. Uh, 
Uh, they obeyed the Lord. And um, as they did so, they were made whole. And I think it's the story of our lives. We um, have all kinds of brokenness. Um, one, of the, one of the weird things about leprosy is it numbs us. And, and it's often connected in the Bible with sin because sin does the same thing. It, 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 it separates us um, from life. It numbs us. And, and we're dying. And then Jesus steps in and says, come, I'm going to give you life. But it's as we walk into it that we find that we start to have that life. So it's our story. And um, it raised a good question for me this week. And, and that is, do I take time to stop and thank God for what he's done? Um, do, I, do I stop and say that uh, to God? And do I say it in general to people? Do I, do I say thank you? And I remember Christmas, I would, I would get presents in. It wasn't unusual for me to like get a really good present and then just take off and go play with it. And then the family would call me back. And I, I never kept track of what presents I got. My mom was sitting there, faithfully jotting down each and every present that each of the kids got. And then at the end of the night, she would hand us this card with all the presents on it and say, you need to write thank you notes to each of these people. And then a month later, she would say, you haven't written those thank you notes yet. <laughs> you know, I never did it. Um, and then I eventually would do it, and I'd go, oh, I have to, fine. Um, and it occurred to me that I don't say enough thank yous. Um, thanks, worship team, for leading us into God's presence and giving us songs to sing so that we can connect with God that way. Thanks to folks who take care of the kids of... Uh, anonymous so those folks can come like I know that's not why you do it is to get a thank you but thanks to hospitality for giving us food to eat over and to have breakfast if we haven't had it yet like me today and whoever set up the chairs and the small groups and so much goes on that we don't acknowledge and take the time to say thank you for no. maybe it's not atypical that nine of these guys didn't come back for all the things that we could say thank you for maybe we grab one out of every ten um, and that's a little bit sad. It's sad for, for those who need to hear it, but it's also sad for us. Um, because uh, it's a powerful thing to say thank you, and there's a lot of good reasons um, that we don't get around to it sometimes. Um, one is that it is atypical. Nine of these guys didn't. Um, I, I think generally in our lives, thank you doesn't have a really prominent place. Um, it's just not the normal way of thinking, and... and uh, it's atypical and I think there's two reasons it's atypical one is that um, we have a sort of entitlement like we do what we do our part so other people should do their part for us um, oftentimes Christina makes dinner for us because she's a way better cook than me for me cooking is grabbing something and throwing it into the oven and it, the, the box better tell me how long I need to put it in there um, so she actually cooks, and, and I think to myself, well, I've done a lot of work, not like she hasn't done her fair share of work, but I've done a lot of work, uh, and, and so it's, it's really nice to have this dinner. Um, but she doesn't have to do it. Like, she could just look at me and be like, I don't know, there's stuff in the fridge, there's cereal, cottage cheese, you can find something to eat. Um, I don't remember at our wedding there being a vow about, I will cook you dinner, because I'm the better cook. Um, <laughs> we didn't have that one. Last time I checked, I'm not a king, and I don't have any servants. So um, there's just this sense of entitlement where we go, oh, that's just how it works. Um, and uh, I'm reminded of something that was told to me regularly growing up. The world doesn't owe you anything. God doesn't owe us anything. The world doesn't owe us anything. Other people don't owe us anything. And even if they do, even if you are like a boss person, you have somebody who's supposed to do their job and there's consequences if they don't, they still want to hear thank you. Um, it's like oil in an engine. Without the thank yous, things start to scrape and then they start to grind and then they stop. Um, resentment builds up and, um, and we need the thank yous to keep things running right and for our generosity to keep flowing. Um, but I think there's an even bigger reason than just the entitlement. And that is, um, it takes time to stop, to look someone in the eye and say, thank you. Um, 
these guys who were getting healed, they were just giving their life back. They're going in to see the priest. If the priest looks at them and goes, hey, you don't have any more leprosy, they're like, sweet. I can go back to my family. We're going to throw a big party. But uh, well, i got to find a job. I can no longer sit outside the city and hope that somebody gives me something to live off of. Nobody wants to support an ex-leper. <laughs> um, they just don't do that. So I got to get a job, and then there's my bowling league I got to get signed back up for, and my soccer team. I got stuff to do. And um, I think most of us are so busy that the idea of stopping to actually say thank you uh, feels like we can't afford that slowdown. Stuff to do. Um, and we live kind of a, a freeway life. Like, what's the fastest point that I can get from point A to point B, get my to-do list done along the way so that I can go to sleep and start again tomorrow? Um, and what if life was lived like side streets? You pull up to the stop sign and you look around and you go, wow, I got here. That's nice. Thanks. And then you move on to the next one. Um, or maybe it's even more dire than that. Maybe we are actually doing freeway lives with our brakes cut. We don't even know how to slow down anymore. Um, we're on a runaway train. Um, I was talking to one of my seminary professors and he was telling me about um, how, how people's, he had read this thing about how people's brains are changing because of technology. Um, we're actually uh, changing the way that we think and we are getting worse at going deeper and doing critical thinking, but we're getting really, really good at hydroplaning. So we can blast through way more information and get little scraps of it than we ever could before. Um, for example, I rarely read news articles, but I read the headlines. Um, <laughs> and thankfully, they put them in like 25 characters so that I can know what's going on and now I can speak knowledgeably about what's going on in the world. Um, I multitask. I do three things really poorly rather than one thing really well most of the time. Um, and I'm ADD, so it works for me. But, uh, but I think that happens in our spiritual life all the time. Like uh, We sit down to spend time with God, and, and we read scripture, but we just read it really fast, and then we're done. Good, I got to check that off my list. Um, or uh, I have a little daily devotional, and I often start it like five minutes before I have to get to my next thing. And so I'm like, how fast can I read these words? And I'm going to skip that section and that section because I don't have time for it. Oh, there's the end. Amen. <laughs> I get a lot out of it that way, too. <laughs> there's this new trend of, um, of mindfulness. And uh, I know I've, I've attempted it on occasion. It, it's, it's hard for me to do. But like mindfulness and eating would be like to sit down, to take one bite, to look at it, put it in your mouth, actually savor it, Maybe even swallow before you put the next bite in. Uh, crazy idea. Um, and enjoy being fully present with the people you're with at this meal. Um, I think Christina and I have attempted to do it on a couple occasions, and it's lasted like a week or two, and then we're like, all right, let's get, get going. Um, why is yoga so popular? I think it's popular because people are like, oh, I can breathe. And slow down and breathe. Christina and I got to take a trip to Italy once uh, a while back, and we um, were like going to see every site that was important, and, and uh, museum fatigue began to set in, where you've seen so many cool things that they all start to blur together, and you're like, oh great, we're going to another museum. Oh look, it's Michelangelo's masterpiece. Fantastic. <laughs> where are we going next? <laughs> so like, I'll see him. Okay, we can get that in. Um, we ended our trip by going to a place um, called Cinque Terre. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cinque Terre is funky because there's no cars there. You can't take a car there. You, you take a train in, and it's this town. And, and I was trying to look up what you can do in Cinque Terre. There's nothing to do. <laughs> nothing. Maybe go for a hike. I, I don't know. Like, nothing. You just sit there and look at the ocean and relax. And, and tons of people come away from these trips and go, oh my gosh, that was the best part of the trip. Because I lost track of what hour in the day it was. Because <clears throat> I was just sitting. Um, slowing down is so needed in our lives. And saying thank you is like that. It's, it's a chance to slow down and appreciate 
what it is that you've been given, whether it's from somebody else or whether it's from God. And we need it. We need it for ourselves, and we need it um, for our relationship with God to be able to hit the brakes somehow. I want to read uh, verses 15 and 19 and put them together for you. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, and he was praising God in a loud voice. And then Jesus said, Rise, go. Your faith has made you well. The other guys were cleansed. This guy got made well. John 10.10, 10, I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. Maybe part of having a full life of living fully is to actually slow down and say thank you so that you can get more out of life than just the thing. So the first reason for saying thanks is, is to slow down. The second reason is that it connects us. It connects us to people. It connects us to God. That word, um, you've been made well, I, I looked it up, and in the Greek it's a cool word, it's, it's sozo, and it's, um, it means literally you were saved, you were delivered um, from something, and uh, those other guys, they got something, they got, they got the healing that they wanted, but they didn't get saved, um, they didn't get made whole, they didn't get connected to God in the same way, and uh, it's so easy for us to see God and to see others as just mechanisms that give us what we want, especially when we're trying to get so much done. Um, they're just tools, and that's how these guys saw Jesus. Well, I don't have any other tools to get healed, but there's this guy coming into town, and he can heal people. Let's cry out for him to help us, and then I can get back to my life. And he did help them, but they're just a tool. Um, and when we actually stop and take the time to say thank you, we see a person instead of a tool. I um, had gotten nudged by God a couple times to, to really try to say thank you to the people who um, had been instrumental in my coming to faith in the first place. Because um, I like became a Christian, six months later I'm in Bible school, I'm doing ministry, and I never went back very well. And so, um, just like in the last couple of years, I got this chance to go over and have dinner. I was going to make a nice dinner. I can only cook one thing well. It's raviolis. Um, but I went over and I made raviolis for my old pastor and his wife. And I got to have this dinner where we sat down and we spent time together. And I looked at his slides of his trip to Africa and I heard about what he's doing in his retirement. And there was this sweet moment where we were reconnected. Saying thank you connects us back to people much smaller scale. Uh, we go into a coffee shop, we order a latte, we pay for it, we're entitled to it, they hand us the latte, I have two options, I can either blow out of there and keep going on with my day, use the mechanism that's in place, this nice barista, um, or I can stop and say thank you and recognize that human being made me a latte. Um, the only time, if I don't do that first thing of actually saying, uh, or stopping to say thank you, the only time a barista would get talked to is if the drink was poorly made. Your machine's broken. Uh, you're supposed to provide me with the latte. It's not what I wanted, so make it again. And then they make it again, and they say, oh, fault in the machine, keep going. Um, what a horrible day to go through where you are treated like a machine the entire day. And I think it's probably the main reason why I usually see like glazed over eyes at most places that have, uh, like if I go to Subway and I ask the guy to make me a sub, I often will try to like find out some human connection here. And I can't do it because they're like, I'm at work, autopilot, because the only time I get talked to is when I don't do things right. So I'm a machine that makes subs. We are not machines. You're not a machine. None of us want to be a machine. Um, so, having somebody acknowledge our humanity and thank us for our contributions is crucial to being a person. We need that thank you. We need that connection. And when we give that to God, it reminds us that there's a God behind it. Faith is not about some mechanism that saves us. It's not about a golden ticket that gets us into heaven. It's about a relationship with God. And taking time to say thank you will give us that back. So this leper stops and he thanks Jesus for healing him. He praises God in his new loud voice. I love that little, little note. 
praised him in a loud voice. He didn't have a loud voice before. It was ten of them trying to yell together to make enough noise to get Jesus' attention. And then he doesn't just fix his skin disorder. He saves him. He makes him whole. Um, which kind of brings me to the last, last piece of this, which is um, I don't think we fully receive blessings until we say thank you. Somehow thank you actually finishes the work and makes us appreciate it more. When I stop to tell the barista thank you for making my latte and I recognize someone made it for me, it's somehow a better latte. Um, when I stop to thank my wife for making dinner, even if it's just mac and cheese on a plate, <clears throat> I appreciate the gift and the meal somehow better. One of my faults as a person is that I have a tendency to do about 85% of every job. If I go to a restaurant and I order dinner, I will eat like 85% of the plate and I will leave like two bites there. It's not even enough to take home. It's totally weird, but I just feel wrong about eating those last two bites. And then when I have to clean the house for a small group and get it all ready, I pick up like 85% of the things and I leave like three. And it drives Christina crazy because she's like, why didn't you pick up for a small group? And I'm like, I did. Just not all of it. And, um, <laughs> I never finished the job. Uh, and it's so good that I'm not like a cancer surgeon because I'd be waking people up. <laughs> you know, I might have given you a few more months, but I, I, I didn't really get all of it. Uh, maybe we can do another surgery later to try to get the rest. I don't know. Um, and, and saying thank you brings us the other 15%. Uh, it makes us well. If we want to live life to the full, if we want to get it out of the most out of what we are doing and what we've been giving. Um, saying thank you is a way to finish the work. Um, it's absolutely true in our relationship with others. If we don't say thank you, we're going to miss out on part of what was done for us. Uh, if it's absolutely true in our relationship with God when we don't have a way to actually articulate what we're thanking God for, what he's given us. Um, we will have a vague and sort of distant theoretical idea that we're saved and that we've been blessed. But it just doesn't turn real for us until it connects to something. It never gets into our bones. It never soaks in. And um, I'm so thankful today just for our worship team because they give us the words to say thank you. Um, I'm thankful for our time and our service when we have an offering because... I can do something tangible to say, thanks, God, for giving me what I have. Um, and there's an actual number, and I can watch it happen in my bank. Like, it gets real. It soaks in. Um, and I'm thankful for, uh, like, when we have communion. We do that the first Sunday of each month. It, it, it's a powerful time because we, we stop <coughs> and we take in something. And uh, if you'll notice me when I come up to take communion, those of you who are, are, are serving, um, I usually respond by saying, thanks be to God, when you hand me bread. Because that stopping to say thank you reminds me that without God, I was lost and didn't have a chance. But because of what Jesus has done, <clears throat> I'm becoming a new person, and I'm being made well. Um, as we continue to worship, uh, as we sing some more songs, we're going to have a chance to say thank you to God. And I hope that that can ring through in the words that we sing. Um, and I also hope that as we worship this week, as we as we walk with God this week and praise Him for what He's done, that thank you can be a part of it. In really small, tangible ways, find ways to look people in the eye and just say thank you. Can we do that? Alright, let's pray. God, Thank you doesn't quite cover it. You gave us your life, literally. You gave us everything that we have, and without you, we're lost. But somehow, out of your kindness, and out of your grace, and out of your mercy, you gave us life. So, Lord, may we be people not who miss nine out of ten of the things that you give us. May we not be people who have vague ideas of being blessed, but may we be able to find the time in the space in our lives to say thank you, to let it sink in how much you've given us and how much um, others have given us as well. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen.